I can't wait to see Asterix the movie. I'm really looking forward to it. I love any kind of animated movie now that I'm a mum of two, and especially one that has kind of adult humour in it, and I believe this is going to be right up my street. It's really nice to see some British grown artists in, in a really big flick that's going to be around the world. I'm really excited. When you're not watching fantastic kids' films, what are you working on yourself at the moment? <laughs> um, I'm actually going on tour very, very soon in a play called Mum's the Word. Um, so it's acting in a comedy. And um, I've got some really big international work coming up soon. So things are going really good. Can you tell us a bit more about that production, what the story's generally about, where you fit into that one? Um, my character um, is a lady, a mum of two children who has um, an ongoing health history, um, poor health history. So mine's a little bit of a sad character. And then there's four or five other women in the play who have comedy roles. So it's kind of a little bit like Virginia monologues, um, a little bit less monologue -y and a bit more play, but it's definitely got monologues in there. And it's really... It's really gritty, it's really good to get my teeth into and get back to work on stage. It's a little bit different. I think that singing with a, my band is my comfort zone. Um, but being on stage in general is just somewhere where I, I just love and adore. And whether it's singing or acting, um, I feel at home there. I'm really excited to get back to work. You know, I, I, it's been four and a half years now um, since having Face, and I've only been doing bits and pieces. I haven't actually took a big job on, so this is the first thing that I've accepted um, in five years. Um, so I think it's time for me to get more Mojo back. So, yeah. You mentioned lots of big international work. Um, is that more theatre or is it on camera work? What kind of stuff is that? Oh, it's a bit of secret work at the minute, so we have to keep that tight lips. And then um, in November, I fly up to air in Scotland and I'm in Panto there for, for two months. So we're shipping the whole family up there. Oh my goodness, Panto, um, just, it wouldn't be Christmas without a Panto, without a good pantomime. We see at least two or three as a family, um, and I make them see the one that I'm in at least five times as well. But it's just a great English tradition, and I remember growing up watching it with my family at Christmas, thinking I'd love to be in Panto one day, and now I get to be in one, and it's amazing. Well, I just recently got back from Australia, where I was singing with Atomic Kitten. Um, so I, I've done that. Um, and there's bits and pieces coming up, but as for Liberty X, no, there's nothing on the foreseeable future at the minute because Kevin's concentrating on his solar materials, so we've all decided that pretty much that's it for now. <laughs> people want to come and see you in the, uh, the the production where can they go for more information about that if you go on to the website mum's word 2 and all the information will be on there are you excited are you looking forward to the screening yeah i can't wait um i'm really really looking forward to it ariana's so excited as well so yeah it'd be a good morning are you familiar with asterix and obelix at all obviously i mean they're huge in france and around the world um, I'm not really that familiar because Ariana's still quite young, but she's quite excited to see it. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. When you were a little girl, were there particular, particularly cartoons that you were really obsessed with that made you really happy? Um, I loved, like, Minnie Mouse, you know, the usual Mickey Mouse, Scooby-Doo. I loved, I loved that as well. And, um, yeah, just any kind of, kind of Disney, really. I, I loved them all. I've got my swimwear line called Chasing Summer, and that's extremely busy. So, um, yeah, that just keeps me, like really so busy every day i've not got time to do anything else so yeah if people uh, haven't had a chance to check out the line yet what can they expect what's unique about that particular line and um, we do lots of like really fun young bikinis lots of embellishments really beautiful for like pool parties lots of accessories that go with them and yeah they, they, they're basically bikinis that stand out so and they're really affordable as well I am so looking forward to this. I mean, this is the only one movie I'd get up for on a, early on a Sunday morning because I used to read all the books, you know, when I was little growing up. Big fan, and I brought my little godson with me today um, to sort of welcome him into the world of it all, and I'm really, really excited. What is it about these characters that you think makes them so timeless? Um, I just think they've got such humour, they're so funny, amusing, um, they're just mad, there's a bit of craziness as well and I just adore it, uh, I mean I've been a fan since a little girl so I really can't wait for the movie. Of course it's an all star voice cast of British comedians, people like Jack Whitehall, Greg Davis, Nick Frost, are you a fan of all of them? Yeah, I'm a huge fan, of course, and, and that's what makes it so great. We've got such great stars in this movie and, and such great humour, as I say, and I think the little ones are going to really enjoy it. 
You're not watching great films like this. What have you got coming up yourself work-wise at the moment? Well, um, I'm doing my radio show on FUBA Radio. I've got a very exciting new show on Sky. So where I'll be flying all over the place, um, very exotic places. So really loads of good stuff happening. And um, fingers crossed, I've also got a movie part myself. So you might be coming to see me in a movie. Can you tell us anything more about the Sky Show, what exactly the premise of that is? I mean, obviously you're flying all around the world. Yeah, it is actually having a look, not just at the rich and famous, but at places that we don't know about. Um, really exciting, looking into the world of all extravagance and luxury. But, you know, it is really wonderful style of people and different, you know, from the best designers, best bars, best restaurants, but all over the world. So it's a real little eye opener and it's going to be fun, lovely for me to film. Do you think there's one location that um, is particularly going to surprise, like uh, dazzle people from that? So, like, well, I have to say, I, I've just come back from filming in the Maldives, and um, I just thought it may be quite boring in a way, just a beach, but there is loads going on, and, and it was incredible. It's probably one of my favourite places ever. So, um, and the, you know, there's places that are hidden treasures there that people don't know about. So, it's going to be really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's great fun. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Grew up, you know, reading all the comics and stuff, and it's great. It's in a movie, and I'm really excited. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, especially the kids as well. Uh, blast from the past. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen the trailer. It looks really good. So, I'm really looking forward to it. What do you think the timeless, the enduring magic of these characters in particular is? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you just, you know, you watch them over the years. You see them in the comics, and uh, yeah, you sort of fall in love with the, you know, their, their lifestyle and you know, that age and how innocent everything was. And it's, uh, yeah, it's very exciting. So I'm really looking forward to see what it's like in a movie. Well, I'm, uh, I build houses for UK developers. I've got a timber frame company, so that's what I do uh, most of the time. And, you know, now and again, I do a bit of commentary and a, a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of after dinner speaking. So I'm pretty busy. Life's good. What's your assessment of the, the state of English rugby at the moment? How are we doing? English rugby is hugely on the rise, second in the world now. You know, Grand Slam champions, you know, beat, uh, beat Australia three times, first time ever. I mean, things couldn't be better. Very exciting times for England. And, um, you know, we've got a World Cup in a few years' time. New Zealand the team to beat at the moment. And that's the next challenge, but very exciting times to, for English rugby. How much of our recent success do you attribute to Eddie Jones in particular coming on board? I think a lot of the success has to go to Eddie Jones. He's not really done you know, too many changes in the side. There's only a couple of changes. Mario Toji, Dylan Hartley is captain. Moved a few players around like Chris Robshaw, uh, James Haskell, and, uh, and it's all worked. And they've got a winning mentality. And also you've got to give credit to the England under-20s as well. We've done well over the last three or four years. So players are coming through. And um, it's not going to be long, I believe, before England are going to be the best in the world. And in terms of Dylan, obviously, when the captaincy was announced, there were some question marks, I think, over how much of an issue temperament was for that role. Um, do you think that now he's already proved those critics wrong? I think he has. Um, you know, certainly his record wasn't the best and there were eyebrows raised about why he should be captain. But you know what? He's proved everyone wrong. I think what the captaincy has done for him, it's cooled that temper, really, and it's made him realise that um, he's got a huge responsibility to do the right thing all of the time. And, um, and people look up to him now and on the pitch he's, he's looking the part, he's playing the part, he, he leads by example and uh, that's the most important thing and, 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 and uh, you know, the temper that he had before seems to really have calmed down and, and that's great. Although we want him to be on the edge as well, he's a hooker, he's in a, you know, a tough position and he wants to lead by the front and he wants to be aggressive but I think the captaincy has certainly helped his game in that respect. There's been a big debate about the question at a school level of whether or not we should be moving away from age-based categories towards a size ranking. Um, as, as someone who's obviously played the sport growing up, how do you feel about that? Do you think that would be an improvement? Do you think that would make the game safer at a school level? I'm not convinced by the, uh, the weight category as to where people will play because I think if you do it by weight, then you're going to have big guys, you know, big boys who are sort of you know, uh, underdeveloped emotionally and they're playing guys who are b bigger and stronger or the same sort of size but older and maybe not as advanced, you know, won't be as advanced as them. And, I, you know, I think rugby is about, sometimes about mismatches, about having big guys running at small guys and, um, and at schoolboy level you're going to have that and that happens and um, sometimes you've just got to be brave enough to tackle and, and, and take them down. 
it's a difficult one. It's not an easy solution, but I think um, I'm not convinced that way. You know, weight category is the way to go. I think, you know, if somebody's far too overweight for their for their age group, you know, perhaps would be moved up. But to group everyone in that respect, I don't think it would work. It's fantastic to have you here this morning. Are you looking forward to the screening? Uh, yeah, I think it's quite nice for bright and early Sunday morning. You're looking forward to it, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you especially excited about this one? Um, I believe, is it Dick and Dom or one of the voices? Yeah, and uh, we're big fans of them. Just saw them last weekend at Camp Festival. So looking forward to seeing them in a kind of animated form. <laughs> Checking out great films like this. What have you got coming up yourself work-wise at the moment? Well, we go straight back into filming Scrambled in two weeks' time. So it's all very good because we've got lots of cartoons that are coming out, like Asterix. And, uh, and then I'm in festival season at the moment. So it's DJ gigs, festivals, festivals. We've got V Festival for Justin Bieber, haven't we? Yeah, and Rihanna. Yeah, yeah. Cannot wait for that. And a bit of festival as well to finish it all off. I'm so looking forward to it. I've been really excited to see this one, actually. What was it that especially excited you about this one in particular? Um, I think it's just really nice coming together on a, like a Sunday morning. It's just something that brings everybody together. I'm such a massive fan of kids' films. I know I shouldn't really be here. I'm a bit of a fraud. I don't have a child with me, but it's really heartwarming, I think. Are there particular kids' films that when you were a kid or even now that you're especially obsessed with? Um, anything cartoon. I'm, I'm a massive kid at heart. I think I'm not very cool. So anything cartoon, a little bit out of the ordinary, a little bit fantasy. It's just quite nice to get out of that bubble of reality sometimes. When you're back in that bubble of reality, what have you got coming up work-wise at the moment? Um, at the moment, I'm doing lots of fashion stuff. So very far removed from kids' things. Um, but yeah, it's just really nice to be here. What kind of fashion stuff are you doing at the moment? So at the moment I'm doing Super Drugs YouTube channel, so I'm doing lots of celebrity interviews for them. Um, and then a few things that I can't talk about, but I will be able to really soon. And what about the blogging? Have you got more of that coming up? Yeah, so I've got my blog on Huffington Post and I've got my own blog. So I work with quite a few brands. Um, at the moment I'm doing more sports and fitness stuff. So I used to be in the army, so I'm trying to bring it all back in together. So that's kind of where I'm going with that. If people want to be successful bloggers themselves, have you got any advice as someone who's clearly doing very well at it? Oh, thank you. Um, I think to be a successful blogger, you've kind of just got to keep going. I think if you love it, then just keep on pedalling, go everywhere you can, talk to everyone you can, have a blog, write about absolute rubbish and just enjoy it. Like If you don't enjoy it, you're doing the wrong thing.